Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible Basics. Uh, I'm George Willett with the Westport Christian Church, and we are doing our study on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, this is Lesson 19, and I titled this, Don't Worry. So we've been doing this again. This is our 19th week in, in the sermon, and the good thing is today, today we're going to finish Chapter 6. And we hope you've, you've enjoyed it. We hope it's been helpful that as we've gone through, not verse by verse, but section by section, we've talked about it. You've come to a, a deeper understanding of what Jesus is doing. And, and as always, I want to start with this. I, I just want to keep this in front of us, that the Sermon on the Mount, uh, these teachings, it, it's Jesus proclaiming what the kingdom of heaven is like. When Jesus began ministry, you know, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is not what happens when Jesus returns a second time. He inaugurated the kingdom. Now, the kingdom of heaven is here in his death, burial, resurrection, in his ascension back up to the side of the Father, the right hand of the Father. He is reigning as Lord today. And he wanted people to know this is what it is like to be in the kingdom because the story that God had been telling, mankind had added to it. We had misunderstood it. We had misapplied it. And Jesus came and said, okay, the Messiah is here. The son of, of man is here, God in the flesh. And let me tell you, let me, let me straighten everything up for you. Let me, let me get you back on track. So he goes into this, this, this idea here at the, at the very end. Now, remember he had talked about where your, your heart is in the section before this, like you're either going to be focused on the treasures of earth, the things of earth, those things that are temporary, or we're going to be focused on the things of God, the heavenly realm, the, the, the kingdom. Those are the things that are eternal. And then he, he slips to that, this, this whole idea of, you know, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve this, this physical world, these, these, these earthly treasures that are going to be temporary and destroyed, and then try to serve the kingdom at the same time, because you're going to end up hating one and loving the other, serving one and, and despising the other. It's no surprise that he then goes into this. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? And you know, he's continuing this idea of, of what are you going to focus on? Where's your heart going to be? Is it going to be on the things of this earth? There's material needs and these material wants. Or is life more than just what we're experiencing here? You see, as, as kingdom citizens, if, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you've surrendered your life to him biblically, you are a citizen of heaven. I mean, you're here on earth, but th this isn't this isn't what's important for us. We've got another home. We've got a, an eternal permanent home that we are striving for, that we are doing everything we can. And, and like the, the Lord's prayer said, you know, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This idea that we're inaugurating, we're bringing in, we're, we're, we're doing life under God's will, his kingdom is now. And he says, life is more than all of the stuff we worry about and, and, and are concerned about. He goes on, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Now, now, I think that the original hearers, who, who are much more in tune with, with the natural rhythms of life, maybe heard this differently or, or it was a little bit more understandable than it is for some of us. Jesus is not saying like, don't go out and work. He's not saying don't go out and <clears throat> um, don't plant your crops and, and don't take care of them and just fly from tree to tree and you'll be fine. No, we still care. We still are concerned that we're going to make plans but it's, a, it's the issue of worrying. And, and he, so he uses something that everyone would have understood. Look to the birds. You know, without doing all the things that we do, without all of the worry and the concern and the anxiety and, and just everything, they're fine. Because God has set up his creation in such a way 
that, that we can provide and be taken care of. And if we focus on God and we do godly things and godly ways, we're going to be taken care of. And, and we're so much more valuable than the created animals. Why would we not think that God has, has set up the world in a way that we can have our needs provided for too? And he, and he ends that section with, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Now, this is interesting to me. Um, many of you know, some of you maybe don't, is, is I've got a degree in psychology. That's what I went to college for before God calls me into, into ministry. And I, I have worked my whole adult life with families and children um, doing different things. And, and in the last 17 years of that, that world, I was working with foster and adoptive families and children. As you can imagine, lots of anxiety, lots of worry. And, and we used to ask these, these questions, try to help people reframe and to understand worry and anxiety. So the question would be, okay, what you're worrying about, is it going to matter five years from now? Like five years from now, are you even going to be able to look back and think and go, hey, I remember when I just worried myself sick about this? Or a year from now? How about a month from now? Is this going to be something I'm going to be worried about a month from now? How about five minutes from now? And, and that whole exercise was trying to help people, you know, understand the damaging effects of worry and, and how it doesn't accomplish anything. It doesn't do anything. And I would let them know. And you can do this. Think about it. I'm, I'm trying to think back five years from now, from today, five years back, sorry. What were the things that I was worried about? What were the things that were like keeping me up at night or just making me sick to my stomach or, or whatever anxiety and worry brings that I'm still worried about today or happened or they happened and I dealt with them or, but they're just a, 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 like, I'm worried. Like I'm, I'm still, they're still bothering me and I can't think of anything. I can't really think of anything from a year ago that would have been such an issue that I would have, I would have had it negatively impact my life. Instead, you teach people this too, like what you're worrying about. And I can't remember the exact percentages, but the majority of the things that we worry about as people are never going to happen. They just don't. They, they, you know, that's like, you know, 80, 85% of the stuff people worry about. It just never, ever, ever ends up happening or can't happen. So the rest, like 10%, so the 95%, you know, this final 15% you got, 10% of that is stuff that's going to happen, but you can't do anything about it. Like you don't have the control, the authority, the ability to change it. It's going to happen and we just have to deal with it and, and, and move forward. And that left about 5% of the things that are going to have, that, that could happen, that we worry about will happen and we can actually influence that before it happens. So the whole idea is let go of the stuff that you can't worry about because it's probably not going to happen. You let go of the stuff that you can't change because you don't have the ability and you focus on that 5% and you make the changes you need to make or you make the preparation you need to do so that you can handle it and then you move on. You're no longer stressed, anxious, or worried. This, this idea, when I hear, you, you know, who of you by worrying adds a single hour to your life? Does it matter in any sort of way that I need to continually be worried about it? He goes on, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow and they don't labor or spin? Yet I can tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. And again, the natural rhythms of life, the, these examples that Jesus is bringing out, Solomon, you know, one of the, the most regarded kings, he was the son of David. He prayed when it, God offered to give him something, he prayed for wisdom. The wisest man, he was rich beyond measure. Didn't use his wisdom in his personal life later, but that's a whole different story we can get into sometime. But with all of his riches, with all that he had accomplished, God clothed the, the, the fields more beautiful. And, and again, it's not like don't make clothing or don't, you know, have plans to, to what you're going to wear. It's 
Don't let the things of this world burden you down. God is God. We can have faith and trust in God. And if God provides for his creation like this, the rest of his creation, why wouldn't he provide for us too? So he continues, if if that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Uh, Again, there's this issue of of worry, that worry um, saps us of of our energy to live in faith. Um, worry is, is one of those things that are against faith. When we know who God is, when we, when we believe, and remember the word faith in, in the Greek, it is not, oh, I believe something that's not true, which is what a lot of modern skeptics want to say. The word in the Greek for, for faith is the same word for belief. It's the same word for trust. It is because of your experiences, because of what you do know, you can trust this. Um, you do it all the time. When you sit down in a chair, any chair, anywhere you go, restaurant, another person's house, whatever, you sit down assuming you trust, well, all of my experiences as I sit down in the chair holds. It's informed trust. Now, in fact, have there been chairs in the past that have broken when people have sat on them? Yes, but that's extremely rare. The faith, the trust is in, this is my experience. This is all the evidence I've seen. When we have that kind of trust in God, all the evidence I've seen of who God is, and Jesus gives evidence from nature that God takes care of his creation, I don't need to worry because I know that God has given me a way to be taken care of. I may have to work at it. I may have to do something. I may have to make some changes in my life, but I don't have to worry that this worst case scenario is going to happen or I'm going to get stuck. That's a real, I'm telling you from someone who did this for years, who did tons of training, this is a real effective way of of getting out of all of that lifestyle of worry and anxiety. Focusing on what you can change, having trust in your own evidence. and, and, And again, doing the things you need to do, but then don't worry about what may or may not happen at some point in some distant future. So he continues and he says, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. In the kingdom as kingdom citizens, we don't worry the way the people of the world worry, pagans, uh, civilians, they're, they're not Christians. It's not meant to be um, some insult to people. It was just a word that it described, you know, they're, they're civilians. They're, they're, they're not believers. They're not in this group. And the people of the world, the people of no faith, worry and run after all of those things. We don't want to be like them because our Father, the Heavenly Father, knows what we need. We can have faith and trust so that we can be done with worry. And he tells us how. Verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I want to have so much faith in God. I want to be pursuing his kingdom, the things that Jesus is teaching us. I want to live this way and and think about this stuff and meditate on it and and have it fill me so much that I'm pursuing God that it pushes worry out of my life. And the things that I need, God knows what I need and, and I will do the next right thing that God tells me to do. And guess what? My life works out. And when tragedy strikes, when, when problems happen, I do the next right thing and it works out. And, and, and I don't worry about the bad thing. I'm like, what's the next thing God wants me to do? Um, uh, I'll just share. Um, I, I have been diagnosed with bladder cancer. My, my first surgery was way back in, um, like I got sick in 13 and 
from 14 on, I've been going to doctors nonstop, like it seems like every three months. And then I'd finally get to the point where I was okay. And I was going to go to six months and the cancer would come back. And then I have surgeries and doctors every three months. And one year I had five surgeries in one year because the tumors kept coming back and had multiple rounds of chemo and some uh, biotherapeutic meds and just went and saw the doctor like last week. It's now been 18 months since my last surgery. It's, it's been 18 months since my last active uh, tumor, uh, cancer tumors in my bladder. And what have I done from 14 until now? I do the next right thing. I, I don't worry. I, I go to the doctor. I, I took the medicine. I did the surgeries. I'm doing the things that I'm asked to do. I'm drinking more water. And, and if I do what I got to do, I'm going to be fine. If the cancer comes back, we'll take care of it. If the cancer gets more aggressive, we'll take care of it one way or another. So I don't worry. And, and whether or not my cancer comes back and they get to take my bladder away, that's a worry about tomorrow. It's not today. I'm not going to worry about it. If it happens, it happens. I'll deal with it when it happens. Today, what are the things I need to focus on today? Life is much saner. It is much happier. It is much more productive and effective when we live this way. So I hope that's been helpful to you. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to join in the voice of Jesus. Don't worry. Don't worry. God is God and God's got this. What's the next right thing we need to do? We seek after the kingdom of God. We seek after the righteousness of God. And things will start making more sense. All right. God bless. See you next week.